this is the world's most expensive car. Check it out. This car is 66 years old, but it's worth over $100 million. What? And we get our hands on it. A massive thank you to Mercedes. Uh, we are here in Germany in a secret location. This car here is called the 300 SLR. Now 300, that stands for three liter, okay? And then SLR, super light racing. This car was made in 1955. Now back in 1955, before this car was made, there was actually a roadster version. So, meaning no roof, all right? And that car back in 55 won every single race that entered and finished, including the Mille Miglia. That car was one of the most successful racing cars back then. They brought this out, but they only had the opportunity to make two of these coupe versions in the world before Mercedes decided they're gonna shut down their racing divisions. There's even been people saying that it's worth up to $300 million. Now, this is actually, as I said, a racing car. Now, let me just show you why they say it's a racing car and not made for consumer purposes. Look how you have to sit, ready? So you get in. You get in, right? Look at this. This I've never seen before. Look, you've got a little a little space here, right? And this is where usually both your legs would fit in this space underneath the wheel. But you've got the whole drivetrain here in the middle. So you've got to sit like this. And that, my friends, is why I never wear dresses on shoots. <laughs> This is not the most ladylike position. This is actually the gas pedal and this is covered in leather because they didn't want the driver's uh, shoes to slip off the gas pedal. Now this leather here as well, this is not for luxury purposes like leather is used today. This is actually just here because it is durable material. So when you're a driver and you're throwing your body over the side of the car to get in, they wanted to make sure that this actually lasted well. There is a button right here. Can you see that? If you actually release this, it opens up a vent from the engine, the engine is literally right there. It opens it up to release the heat from the engine and that would literally just come in into the cabin. So you would, you'd have to have like fireproof shoes on or something if it would get pretty hot. Now the guy who used to drive this around, Mr. Uhlenhout, actually sustained permanent hearing loss because of the sound of this engine. Isn't that mad? And that is why this car is nicknamed the Uhlenhout Coupe. It's nicknamed after him. It only has, look, over 5,000 kilometers on the clock. And this is after 66 years. Isn't that mad? These are for the wipers. Look, you've got the Wehr wipers. This, this is actually to turn the engine off, so Ausmachen. And then here, you've got the choke. Here, you've got this to pull and then the hood opens. So we're gonna look under the hood in just a second. And this is the blinkers made because of course Ullenhout had to use this as his daily car so he needed blinkers. This one here is the dash lights for this and this is the dash lights for this side. Now down here we have a gated gearbox, five gears and reverse. Now you just got to push the button in first to release it to be able to get into first gear okay and then what's interesting is you see this little thing it's actually a manual release because to get into reverse you need to pull this up physically and now you're actually able to pull this back into reverse so that's there to actually make sure that it cannot just somehow flick into reverse uh, accidentally material wise as i said leather used for durability this here it's very comfy it's very much not like current racing seats it's just like a little bit of <laughs> cushioning which is crazy and no seat belts no seat belts in racing this car has a top speed of 290 kilometers an hour. Can you imagine driving 290 kilometers an hour with no seat belts? That's crazy. First things first, you pull this 
the H. All right, that releases it. Now we try and get out. Oh, and that is why I'll never be a racing driver. Pull this up. Here, there's a little thingy majig that you then stick in here. All right, and you push that until it clicks. All right, and now it's stable. Now, look, you have an inline eight or a straight eight, so eight cylinders. You can see them here very clearly. And what you might notice is this look, here are the brakes. So the brakes are not actually on the wheels they're here in the middle and that was so they could save weight from the wheels so the wheels this whole area here isn't too heavy the weight is then more here in the center this had more horsepower this engine right here than what they were using in the f1 cars back then but what is similar is this look the exhaust look at this look at this straight out here straight out the side straight out the side where do you see that this is going to be so loud and over here look you've got an air intake right here come around the back this is how you open it pull this and this right here is a d that stands for deutschland so germany and you open this up and here you go look at this you've got a spare wheel you can also fit another spare wheel here but we took it off so that you could see what else is going on here this is the fuel tank so you put in the fuel right here. This is to support the brakes and this is the fuel pump. So that's what you've got going on in the back of the car. It is so light. You know why? Because the whole body is made of magnesium and the chassis is still, but the whole body is magnesium. Now you think, okay, so if race cars were made of magnesium back then, why are they not still made of magnesium? Magnesium is super, super expensive. They found a better way to build cars today and that is through carbon fiber using carbon fiber because it is also lighter and stronger so back then this was super expensive to make using magnesium let's start her up shall we let's do this we need to hear this all right everyone got their earplugs yeah, yeah. Earplugs in. i'm gonna learn first how to start this car because it is currently cold the engine is cold so we have our special mechanic over here Uwe, who's gonna come on in come on in come on in join the supercar blondie show Come on over. Uh, he's going to warm up the engine. Now, I want this on camera because, of course, this has not been started in a while. So it's a cold engine and we're going to hear the blast from the exhaust over there. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Here, I'll grab my phone. Let's yep. in. Okay. Steering wheel comes off. Do you see that? Little button, pull off. Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right. And you get... <laughs> <laughs> Ich habe es, ich habe es. Okay. Okay. Werde ich da gleich verbrennen oder ist das okay? Ja, das ist schlecht. Ist schlecht, ja? So he just said, he just said, don't stand there. Once it goes on, you'll probably burn your legs because it's going to come straight out of here. So just be careful. Come stand back around here so you can see the buttons. Ja, ich will, ich will von hier, okay? Okay. Wait, do you get all of that? Ja, ja. Look how many people. Molly. Okay, all right, it's warm now? It's warm. It's yes. warm, okay. Phew. So, can you imagine Ullenhout, the guy who actually drove this car around as his daily car? Now you can understand why he got permanent hearing damage. Can you imagine just starting that up like 5 a.m.? Your neighbors are like, 
shut it off already <laughs> that is just insane now what is also insane is he did the trip from frankfurt to munich which is about 280 kilometers in one hour back then in 1955 he was going top speed all the way from frankfurt to munich in this how crazy all right i think it's my go is it my go all right so there's a bit of a procedure as you saw i'm gonna push this in push it in pull this out okay honk you need to honk otherwise it doesn't turn on <laughs> and then this one here ready this one. 